Good morning, Girl Scouts, friends and families. My name is Kat, and I'm the program specialist here in North Platte at Lakeview Cabin. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe out there. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning for our live horse lessons with Dusty at Dusty Trails. All the information today will help juniors earn their horseback riding badge. So without further ado, let's meet Dusty and his horses. Ladies, uh, welcome to Dusty Trails. I'm Dusty. We have Elise, Gentry, and Stephanie right here. And we're going to take you over to meet the horses. So come on in, follow us in here, and let's go meet the horses. I hope once we get inside the stalls here, you can still see. It's going to be a little bit dark. So we're going to just go right down the line. I'll introduce all the horses, tell you a little bit about each one of them as we go. Um, and as we do more of these videos, we'll get into more in-depth, a little more specific about each one of them, okay? So over here on this side, we have Josie. This is uh, one of my oldest horses. I've had her the longest. She is 23 years old. I believe she will be 24 this spring. Um, and I've had her since she was about five or six months old. So she's been with me for a long time. Josie is a dun. And if you look right down the middle of her back, you see that dark line down the middle of her back there. Um, that's what makes her a dun. Any horse that has that dark line that goes all the way from their ears to their tails is a dun. And uh, this is a, a girl. So she is a mare. All right. And on this side over here, we have Cash. He's one of our newer ones. We've only had him about, I don't know, a year, maybe two. This is our second, this is the one full year. So Cash is a sorrel. He's got this reddish brown color. It's kind of almost a, an orange, uh, that light light red like that. We call those sorrels. And, and this is a boy and he's been fixed, so he's a gelding. All of the boy horses we have are geldings, okay? And we keep all of our geldings on this side of the stalls and all of our mares over here on this side of the stalls. Again, the mares are the females and geldings are the ma males, okay? So we'll go right down. We have Keisha right here next. She is another dun, much like Josie's. She's got the dark line down the middle of her back. She does have some white markings with a star and a nip. And Keisha's uh, about 20, 20 years old, 21 years old, and I've had her since she was uh, a two-year-old, so I've had her for a long time as well. Captain over here, he's my other, my other oldest horse. Uh, he is, he's the same age as Josie. He's going to be 24 this year, um, and I've had him on and off since he was two years old. I bought him when he was two and trained him. Um, he left for a while as I trained him and sold him to my brother. Had him for a while, and I think maybe my parents had him for a while, and then I got him back. But uh, he's been in the family the whole time. But he's an excellent, excellent horse, and I love to do lots of things on. And then we have Parker right here, another mare. And uh, Parker is an actual, what we call a brown horse. She's kind of that chocolate brown color, not the light orange red color like that Sorrow was we've seen before. This is an actual brown horse. Uh, main tail, legs, body, everything's all that same color, just that almost chocolate brown color, okay? And Parker, of course, is a mare because she's over here on this side. And over here we have Blue. Um, Blue is a sassy guy. When they put their ears back like that, that's him being sassy. So he could be sassy because Tom's leading over here and taking his attention. He got to be sassy because I'm standing too close to him and he's in a bad mood today. That's just blue. That's the way he is. And Blue's color is called a blue roan. And in here, without the sunlight shining on him, it's hard to see. He just looks like a black horse. But when we get him out in the sun, you'll see that he's got little white hairs throughout him all over his body. Um, it's more prominent back farther on his body than it is up here on his face. But he's got these little white hairs throughout his body, which makes him a roan. And any horse with the white hairs throughout their body um, is a roan. And when they're, their base color, the, the dark color that you see for a background, is the black hairs like that. We just call them a blue roan. And uh, 
some of the lighter blue roan horses that have more of the white hairs, you, when you see them at a far, they actually do look blue, and that's where that term comes from. He never looks blue. He never gets enough white hairs to actually look blue, but that's what we call the, uh, the black-based roans, okay? So that's a blue roan. Next over here, turning on our butt to us, I think um, she didn't get tied up, Elise, um, is Sis, and she's got her backside pointed at us. This is another blue roan, and you can actually see more white hairs on her um, where she gets more of that uh, blue colored hue. Probably not here, it looks like a shadow. Uh, you can basically just see the silhouette of the horse in here because of the light, but when we get them out in the light, uh, you'll see more of that, that color on her. On this side we have Tom. Tom is a bay roan gelding. Tom and Blue are both the same age. I believe they'll be 10 years old this year. Does that sound right? Okay. And Tom is also a roan. He has the white hairs throughout the body. Again, I know you can't see that right now. Um, if he didn't have the black mane, tail, and legs, he would be a red roan. Because the, the base color is this reddish brown hair with these white hairs throughout it. Which the more the white hairs they get, the more red they actually look. Um, but because he has the black mane, tail, and legs, that makes him a bay. Um, so he is a bay roan, okay? And we will see a bay right here. This is, this is a bay. He's got the reddish brown colored hair, black mane, tail, and legs. That makes him a bay. He doesn't have the dorsal stripe like Josie and Keisha, otherwise he'd be a dud. But uh, Wyatt right here is a bay. And then we have over here Rodeo. Um, this is the only horse uh, on the place that I've actually raised. Uh, her mother is Josie. Um, the stud, the, her dad would have been a, a horse that my uncle had. Um, so I actually took Josie over and, and had her bred. Um, so I've actually raised this colt and had her. And actually I haven't had her her entire life. I did sell her to a good friend of mine for several years. Uh, once his kids grew up and got out of school and left home, went to college or whatever, he called me up and um, I ended up buying her back. So, uh, Rodeo, she's about 16 years old, I believe. And her color is a flea bitten gray. Can everybody hear me okay on there? Are we getting any comments that, hey, speak up or anything like that? Nope, you're nope? doing good. Okay. All right, so Rodeo is a flea bitten gray. So her base color is, is a gray. She's, she wouldn't be called a white because she has the dark black hairs speckled throughout her, kind of like what we talked about with the roans, having the white hairs. They're not a white horse because they have the, the black hairs throughout them. Uh, that's what makes them a gray. Now, if you look closer at her again, when we brush her off and we get her out in the sun, you'll see that she has freckles all over her whole body. And that makes her a flea bitten gray. We just call them those freckles, we call them flea bites. They're just freckles throughout the light-colored horse, okay? So that's a flea bitten gray. Her name's Rodeo. And remember, Josie down there is her mother. Alicia says that her daughter's favorite horse is Tom. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm I think Elise's favorite horse is Rodeo. She's kind of been in love with that one for a long time. I get asked all the time what my favorite horse is, but it's tough to pick favorites. It depends on what I'm doing. But uh, I would sure be... I would sure miss Josie if she's ever gone. She's She's been with me for a long time. We've done a lot of different things together. And on some of these videos, I'd like to demonstrate some of the different things that she's done. But she's she's really uh, done about anything and everything, from sorting cattle, running barrels, and pulling wagons to to doing jumps and trail rides and lessons. And I, she's, she's done it all. So we'll talk more about her in, a, in another video. We'll highlight some of that stuff. This is Demi. Demi is also a dun, but she has the, the light colored mane, tail, and legs just like her light colored body is. Um, so she is a red dun. Where Josie and Keisha, we just call them a dun, they have the black mane, tail, and legs. Her, her uh, mane and tail are reddish colored just like her body, so we call her a red dun. And when we get her out in the open, we'll be able to see she does have that dark dorsal stripe. It's not a black dorsal stripe. But it's just a darker color that's real defined that runs from her ears to her tail, okay? So that's Demi. Over here is Trigger. Trigger's a unique colored horse. He almost looks black, but you see he's definitely not a clear black. He's got this, uh, the brown hairs throughout him. 
back here, which what did we decide we were calling him? Seal. Oh yeah, steel. Seal. A seal, yeah, a seal brown is what they actually call it. So like, you know, like not a navy seal, but you know, the seals that flop up on the beach, yeah. those kind of seals. So, a seal brown, and he's almost black, but just not quite black. And uh, you'll see a lot of horses like that that we call black, or people call black, but they're really not true black horses. If they have a little bit of brown up in their flank, or on their muzzle, which is, that's, that's where you'll look. If you're actually looking to see if it's truly a black horse, look for that little bit of brown on their muzzle, or in their nose, or in their flanks, right above their back legs there. Um, they'll have a little bit of brown, typically, so. All right, let's see, we have Morgan over here. She has another blue roan. We call her a blue roan. Uh, again, she looks completely different than blue or even cis. She's got brown patches throughout here on her body. Um, and there are brown roan horses. Um, and I, I wouldn't argue calling her that. It depends on the season. If you come over here on this side, Cat, and look with the light, you really could call this a brown roan horse this time of the year. Uh, as the, as the years, the seasons change and that kind of stuff, they do tend to change in color a little bit. But she, uh, she's almost a brown roan. Very well could be. So, which just means her base coat is this brown color with the white hairs throughout it. But she does have the darker, most of her body's the darker black hair. So, we can actually see the white hairs now on her. Yeah, from this side with the mm -hmm. light shining through the, through the south side of the stables here, you can actually see the white hairs. So. So we have some comments. Amara loves rodeo. <laughs> Brooklyn loves Captain. And hello from Norfolk. All right. Well, hello. And we also have someone from Florida on here. Oh, very cool. Well, right here's Charlie. Uh, one of the things I like about Charlie, I mean, he's, he's a good-looking horse. He's a nice ride, very smooth traveling horse. Uh, the best thing I like about him, though, is I named him after the horse my grandpa had when I was younger. He called him Charlie, Charlie Pride, which I know most of you probably don't know who Charlie Pride is, but back in the day, he was an excellent country singer. You can look him up sometime. But... Uh, my grandpa took great pride in Charlie Pride. He was a well-built, very nice horse, carried himself nicely, uh, well-trained. It was a good horse he was very proud of. And this horse is built a lot like him, uh, carries himself much the same way. And So I thought it was a good fit. I was glad to have my own Charlie Pride right here. So, And Charlie's a sorrel, um, a little bit darker color sorrel than the first one that we pointed out up there, Cash, but he's still, still a sorrel. Uh, we have another flea bit in gray right here in Latigo. Another gray horse with uh, with freckles. Again, I think I've had this horse since, well, my mom actually bought this horse as a colt from my uncle, so my uncle raised it. And then uh, my mom and dad and trained it. I did. I helped them train it and get that horse started. And uh, Anyway, she's here with us now, so we've had her all her life. And this here is Newt. Newt is another bay gelding with a faint star. Who's a little camera shy. He is. He likes to turn his nose away like he's bashful. But, Newt. All right. Well, that's the 16 horses that are in the stall. Uh, we're going to go out here and let's meet the, the rest of the mares over here on this side. All right. So we have Caitlin right here. Now you can definitely see the white hairs throughout. That is a bay roan. Again, if she didn't have the black mane, tail, and legs, she would be a red roan, but that's a bay roan. Another bay roan. Um, this is an older horse that hasn't shed off these hairs as much, but as he does, he'll get lighter colored. This is actually the one gelding over here on this side. Uh, that's Willie, Willie Nelson. And then we have uh, my newest young horse here. We have, she's just uh, a three-year-old. We're calling her Reba. She's also a bay roan. I'm kind of partial to bay roans. I like them. I think they're beautiful horses. We kind of notice a trend going here. And then Kimber, also a bay roan. Uh, I believe she's going to be five years old this spring. She's four right now. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 And so we've we've just got her started going pretty good. Um, she was a uh, horse safe. I'm lining up for my granddaughter. It was named after her middle name, just just like Josie was named after her mother's middle name, Josephine. So uh, we're getting a horse started for her. She's a little bit smaller horse, which would be 
a good size for her to get on and she's got a good disposition really quiet and gentle with other people now with other horses she's horribly mean and vicious but we'll get to see that later when we when we bring them in sometime i'd like to have you guys all with us when we bring the horses in out of the pasture that's one of the best things we get to do every day which we did that earlier today but bringing the herd in is, is a lot of fun um, but when you do that uh, you get to see some of the attitudes of the other horses and how they treat each other and they really strike out towards each other they act pretty vicious um, and Kimber's one of the worst even though she's the smallest one out here so uh, this is Lakota another flea bitten gray we have three flea bitten gray mares just coincidence they do make them in geldings but we just don't happen to have any of those um, right here is what I've kind of mentioned earlier a red roan this is Rose but she's an actual red roan horse. Uh, they look really rough right now with their winter coats. They're starting to shed and that. But once they shed off, red roans are beautiful, beautiful horses. Um, of course, they can be all colors. Not all of them are, are as pretty, but uh, they've got different shades and colors of them. But Reba, or, uh, Rose there is a red roan. Shall we go to the other side and meet the geldings? gilding we come up on right here this is rebel rebel turn around here for us there you go rebels uh getting to be a little bit older horse and, and he's a little lame he's got uh some issues on a back leg here that's bothering pretty regular like tendon or something that's bothering him so that's rebel another sorrow gelding and uh this is Waylon. Waylon right here is a bay He's got a lot of white marks on him. He's got the white socks, and uh, he's got the star with a, I think you'd call that an interrupted, maybe an interrupted blade with a nip down here on his nose. He's a pretty nice horse. The kids are loving him. He's one of our newer horses we picked up this last year. And Cash right here, probably is our tallest riding horse, or I mean ace. Ace right here, I believe, is our tallest riding horse that we have, um, and he's one of them that I would, one of probably two that I would say that are actually are not straight quarter horses. Quarter horses are all of our saddle horses are quarter horses. Those are what I'm very partial to. That's what I try to work with most all the time. Um, he might be some sort of a cross or something. I don't really know what his breeding is, but he just doesn't look like he's a straight quarter horse. He could have some thoroughbred or something else in him. I don't really know what it is but uh, another sorrel horse and then we do have the two draft horses oh my goodness Jim he is so gassy I don't know if you can hear that or smell that on the phone but <laughs> this is Jim we, we have... just got a lot of thumbs ups <laughs> <laughs> so Jim's a good looking dude here the black and white spotted looks like a paint horse they call this a spotted draft horse that's the breed it's called a spotted draft we have the two of them here. We have Joe over here. Joe, I believe, is 14, and Jim is 15 years old. Um, Joe right here is an inch taller than Jim, but uh, Jim outweighs Joe by about 100 pounds. Uh, and speaking of weight, I would like to give you guys something to think about. So think about my very biggest draft horse I have, this big guy right here. He weighs about 1,700 pounds, okay? And then perhaps right behind us here is our biggest, heaviest built quarter horse that we have. And this is a big guy. This is, this is blue. Back up here for a minute, that's blue. I want, I want everybody to take a good look at these two horses right here together. My biggest draft horse, whoops, and my biggest quarter horse. These two together Easy. weigh as much as the ox, which we're going to meet a little later. Here you go, Eve. I'll let you pick it up. So I think we, oh, we didn't quite, quite meet all the horses. There's one other horse we haven't met down here. This is Rue. Rue is a dwarf. Um, her parents, I, I was told, I've never met them, but her parents are about 
that big. They're, they're pony sized horses. They're both ponies. But this is a dwarf pony. And not only is it a dwarf pony, but it is a blanket Appaloosa. And the blanket Appaloosa means that it's like you threw a blanket over their butt right here that is speckled. It's not all over their whole body, which would be a leopard Appaloosa, much like a leopard you would see that's uh, spotted all over their entire body. This is a blanket Appaloosa. So, a blanket Appaloosa dwarf pony. A little mare. Her name is Rue. She's super sweet. She's a big, fluffy cotton ball. And uh, she doesn't shed out very well, so we actually shave her every spring. And she looks so completely different and so much smaller when you get all her hair off of her. So that'll be something interesting we'll be able to hopefully do part of or show you on a video here later because uh, we're getting close enough towards spring here. We'll be shaving her pretty soon. We do have a few more winter storms coming, so we don't want to be taking her, her winter coat off too soon. But all of these guys here, they're starting to lose their winter coats. You should come down here and see. It was a couple days ago. Stephanie was brushing Wyatt in the stall right here and made this mountain of hair right there, which there's there's other things than just hair in there, but that's just one time brushing for a few minutes. There's a lot of hair coming off these horses, and they'll do that every day when we brush them, and you'd think after doing that for several days they'd be naked, but, but that hair just keeps, keeps coming off of them. So I think we met all the horses, uh, other than the ponies and stuff over there in the petting zoo, but we'll meet them when we go see the petting zoo. We're going to head over and uh, check out the tack rooms. Does anybody have any questions about the horses while we walk over that direction? Let's go see the tack room, shall we? Yeah. So we have hello from O'Neill, Carney, Columbus. One of Brooklyn's favorite memories is rounding wants to do. Hi, Gentry. Hello, Dusty from Karen Decker. No questions so far. Well, hello. All right. So, have we adjusted to the darkness in here? Can you see okay? All right. Don't look around at the ground and everything else in here because it is a bit of a mess. Winter time, and we have projects going on everywhere around here. So. Um, this is what we call our tack room. Uh, I know the building doesn't look much like a barn or anything, but it's what we use. Um, our tack, tack is a term we use to describe all the equipment that we use on and around with horses and all that. I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, in our tack room we have lots and lots of different things. Uh, we start out right up top here. We have, well, right here in the middle, I guess, we have the spurs. Uh, spurs and what we wear on our boots when we're helping us communicate with the horses. Uh, we have some extra stirrups up top up there. Down below here we have bridles. Each one of the horses has their own bridle assigned to them. Um, they've got their names written above them. Uh, each bridle is a little bit different. We have different bits, different shapes, the way the shank is, the way the, the dog bone in the middle, the copper rollers. There's, there's lots of different things about these which we can get into more later. But uh, um, each horse has its own bit um, according to how they ride and how they uh, react to the different pressures on them. Um, and whether they need a copper roller or not helps keep their, their mouth moist, keeps a slide in their mouth, that kind of thing. So each horse has its own bit. And then Jessica in Omaha wants to know who is the oldest horse? Josie and Captain. I think they're technically the same age, but I always say Josie because I've had her the longest too. So Is it 25 this year? She'll be 24 this year. 24 this year. Same age as my oldest daughter. So that's how I gotcha. remember that. Named after her. I bought that horse just a month after my oldest daughter was born and I named her after her. Her middle name is Josephine. That's where that horse got her name. So she'll be 25 this year. So we have the bridles over here. And then we have <clears throat> saddle pads right here. These are the pads we put on the horses, between the horse and the saddle pad, which helps uh, fit the saddle to the horse so that it doesn't create a pressure point that sets them comfortably, allows the horse to get some air up underneath them and breathe so they don't get too hot, the sweat to roll off, that kind of deal. So we have the saddle pads. Um, and then we have a line of saddles over here. Um, we have all different sizes. 
We start with our smaller, uh, I believe we start with about a 12 inch seat over here. And then we just gradually work our way up all the way up to, uh, I believe we've got at least a 19 inch seat, a couple of them down here. Uh, we have some couple really small seats over here, like uh, 10 inch seats, I believe they are, over here on this wall. We've got some really little saddles. And then I've got my own personal saddle here and gentry saddle. And then over on this wall we have, let's shut that, maybe the glare won't be so bad. Isn't that better? Mm -hmm. We have harness. So with the harness you use a collar. These collars, and some of the collars you can put a pad inside the collar, and that's just kind of a spacer to make it fit the different horses. Um, and even depending on the time of the year and the feed that they're on, you may add or remove the pad just to adjust them because they put on weight just like we do and as they they put on weight and their neck gets a little fatter or uh, or they lose weight if they're working hard every day or if their their feed's not as good whatever you know we got to make sure that collar fits them just right and then the harness <clears throat> lays up over their back the hames fit around this collar here and when they pull <clears throat> this is what they're pulling against that actually puts pressure against their shoulders uh, and that's what they pull against so this is all the different harness. We've got numerous different sizes for the different uh, size teams. Several sets here that fit the big draft horses that you met out there, Joe and Jim. Um, Josie and Keisha, they have their own sets of harness here as well, Josie and Keisha. I used to have a set of ponies. Uh, they were Welsh ponies that were about that big. This set of harness would fit them. Um, anyway, Blue and Tom. Uh, a couple of the bigger quarter horses. We've got harness that will fit these guys as well. So anyway, that's kind of what they are. We have the different size collars um, according to the different size horses and then you can add or remove pads to make them fit as well. So that's a little bit of the tack that we have in here. There's lots of other things like halters and and uh, lunge lines and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So. Stella from New Jersey wants to know if you have any baby horses. And then, who is the youngest horse? Natalie would like to know that. Reba. And how old is she? She is a, she's three right now. She'll be four this spring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we're going to go out. We're going to grab us a horse. And uh, where, how are we doing on time? Three minutes. We have three minutes. Oh, my goodness. No way. That went way too fast. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think we can stretch it a little bit longer and show how to get on a horse bareback. Yeah, so we've been all business here. We've just been talking about introducing and uh, what things are, where they're at, and that sort of deal. Which, uh, if you ever done an academy with us, or you ever ever get to do an academy with us, uh, riding academies, what we we call them, we get to come out and we do classes. They're typically about two and a half hours each, and we would start out our first. 20 minutes doing basically just what we did here. We would introduce ourselves, we'd get to meet you, um, you'd get to let us know your name, where you're from, that kind of stuff, and then we go meet the horses, and then we do an introduction of where things are at. And then after that, we each go get our own horse out and we'll brush it and that sort of deal. Um, so, we've done our quick introduction. We're gonna go get a horse out, brush it down a little bit, and just for fun, we're gonna end today on uh, demonstrating some different ways to mount a horse bareback. And these are just fun and goofy. Some of them are legitimate ways that we actually do it. All of them really are at some point. Some of them are just being goofy. So come on outside. Let's go meet Josie and the rest of the gang. <clears throat> so this is Josie that you met earlier. <clears throat> Gentry's brushing off. She's got a soft brush right here that she's using. Uh, this time of the or, all year round we use these soft brushes. This time of the year we can use curry combs. These are a metal brush that has some little jagged like teeth on it. Uh, you want to be gentle with it. You want to scrape the hair to loosen up any, uh, to bring out any of the loose hair on them. That works well, but you want to make sure that you're not scratching the skin. It's, I'm just running that over her real smooth like you see all that hair that comes off. And, and that's after Gentry had already brushed the entire horse once with the soft brush. So. But as, that, as we lose all that long coat, then we'll quit using these other than to scrape off any crusty, like sweaty spots or somewhere where they got some manure or mud or something on them. We just use the soft brushes, but we'll do this to clean them off a little bit, but we could brush her for hours and that hair would just keep coming. Um, 
So when we get on them and we start jumping on these horses bareback, we're going to get completely covered in hair today. So that'll be fun. All right, who's first? Who wants to demonstrate one one way of getting on a horse? There you go, the old belly flop. That's my preferred method. Uh, that that method isn't necessarily the showy way that uh, that you can do it, but you can do that method to get on a horse that's much much taller, like Joe and Jim. Uh, that's the only way. But I can still get on Joe and Jim bareback, but I have to do the old belly flop, and it's not pretty. Or you can do it a little 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 class of showmanship here, the old the old jump and swing, like Elise does there, and uh, Elise can actually do that onto the big draft horses as well, which is very, very impressive. Or we've got the old, uh, the classic Western movie, Run From Behind and Jump On. There you go. That's a fun way. He wants to join her up there. Oh, there you go. That's embarrassing if you don't make it. Huh? <laughs> All right. And then how are you going to get off? You go off the back. Flip around off the side. There you go. How was that, Kat? Perfect. All right, that's a couple demonstrations on how to how to get on a horse bareback. Thanks, everybody, and I think we're planning on doing this same time, same place next week. Before we end here today, I'd like to give a big out, big shout out to Dusty and his crew for everything he does for Girl Scouts. We have an amazing horseback riding program that is so much fun. Don't forget to sign up for horse camps this summer. Flat Juliet has been busy while we were learning and she has painted a beautiful portrait of one of Dusty's horses. Can you guess who it is? Let us know in the comments. <clears throat> and you can also share your own pictures of Dusty's horses, and don't forget to use hashtags Girl Scouts at Home and GSSN. Tune in this afternoon for at 2 p.m. for Astronomy Live to learn about light pollution in the sun. Thursday morning at 10 a.m. we will host a global Girl Scouting program with Renee where you will learn how to participate in global Girl Scouting at home. If you missed the crane migration episode yesterday, we posted the video this morning on Facebook. Just remember, we're part of a huge worldwide sisterhood. And when you join us live, you are participating with all of your fellow Girl Scouts, their friends and families across our country and the world. Be safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you this afternoon. Bye.